Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sabrina Devone, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. I am a member of our business transformation and innovation team. We focus on new and innovative ideas, never losing sight of the critical thinking and analysis that comes from our global team of expert engineers and designers. Our people are at the core of our success. So every one of our innovation builders team and the speakers on this call are remote working parents and grandparents, and we applaud their ability to find time to share their knowledge in addition to serving their clients while juggling the intersection of their career and home lives. Today's technical presentation demonstrates when and where dynamic simulation should be used. At FLOOR, safety is our number one priority. So normally we start every webinar with a safety topic. However, because of our topic today is essentially an hour long safety and design topic unto itself, we will omit a separate safety topic. So I'd like to introduce our speaker today is Dr. Harry Ha. He is a FLOOR fellow with expertise in dynamic process simulation of bitumen upgrading and petroleum refining processes covering applications such as column relief analysis, emergency depressuring, control and safeguard evaluation, exchanger tube rupture safety checking, and compressor anti-surge analysis. So our objectives for today's discussion are to answer when a dynamic simulation needs to be used in column relief analysis, to demonstrate the advantages of dynamic process simulation, and to show a couple of examples using dynamic simulation. So Harry, please unmute your line and start the discussion. Thank you, Sabrina. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Harry Ha, and I'm process engineer of Floor Canada, currently sitting in Calgary office. Nowadays, everybody is talking about digital twin and artificial technology. Dynamic simulation is a bridge between the real plant and the, your digital twin. It will play an important role in the future gameplay. With the advances in simulation technology, dynamic simulation becomes more and more affordable in terms of the cost and the time required. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to share what I have learned so far in the last 10 years regarding to the dynamic simulation for process safety analysis, specifically the column relief analysis. So first, I will give you a brief introduction of three different column relief analysis methods, which are unbalanced heat method, steady state simulation, and the dynamic simulation method. Then I will show the results of these methods by case studies of two different distillation systems, the cell water stripper and the SNS column with global upset scenario, such as a total power failure and the partial power failure. In the end, I will discuss the pros and cons of these methods and hopefully can shed some light on where and when to apply these methods. The unbalanced heat method is a conventional column relief analyzed method developed by Skepta and Stats in 1978. It has been widely used for distillation column relief load calculations in oil and gas industries. As shown in this sketch, the method assume the mass balance is maintained for the studied system within the envelope of the system, but the heat balance is not conserved. So the relief loads were simply equals the unbalanced heat divided by latent heat of the relieving material. The unbalanced heat method is based on steady state simulations within the envelope of the system. It assumes endless supply of the relieving material, which is typically the top tree liquid of the column. It takes no credit for the overhead cooling. If the overhead drum is flooded within 20 minutes, it's the upset. 
no credits are taken for system hydraulic and thermal limitations. No credit for the system volume and the compositional changes during the relief. If there is any vapor or overhead liquid is blocked during the upset, they will be added to the calculated relief loads. The unbalanced heat method is usually used for the grassroots project. However, there are situations where unbalanced heat method are not recommended. It is not recommended for the columns with a low overhead to, to bottom flow ratio. It means a small overhead, but a big bottom system, such as a stripper and a stabilizer. It is not recommended for the complex column system, for example, the reaction distillation columns or the column relief near eight critical regions. It is not recommended for the column with significant compositional changes and the transitional change during the relief. The vapor blue through case cannot be conducted by unbalanced heat method either. As an alternative, steady state simulation can be used for some of the cases where the unbalanced heat method does not fit. For example, it is recommended for the vapor blue through upset. It is also recommended for loss of fade or loss of reflux cases where a large amount of column liquid hot up is subject to heat input. However, the model does not account for any transitional changes or compositional variations during the relieving process, but it assumes endless supply of the relieving material. The steady state model represents the peak relief moment of the upset event and is considered to be conservative as well. Floor always try to help our clients to maximize their revenue with minimum cost and a safe design. Saving project cost without sacrificing safety is a primary drive for us using dynamic simulations. There are also cases of brown field where column PSV need to be rerated with either process changes or increased throughput. In these situations, the overestimated relief loads by unbalanced heat method or steady state modeling will result in a big new scope of work. Sometimes it is even not practical to modify an existing system due to available spaces and the time frame. This is where the dynamic simulation can help. Dynamic simulation is a rigorous modeling method with detailed system configurations. It has advantages to take credit of the dynamic changes of the comp such as compositional change and the transient changes. It takes credit for system volume and the limited liquid caught up. It takes credit of the system hydraulic limitations such as a pump head and the static head as well as the pressure losses during the relief. It takes credit for thermal limitations of the heat transfer during the relief. For example, the increased log mean temperature difference, LMTD, for overhead cooling, and the decreased LMTD for the reboiler. As a result, the relief loads predicted by the dynamic simulations are less conservative but more accurate. Therefore, it can save mailings for the project. Here is an example of dynamic simulation applications. Dynamic simulation relief analyze for a salt water stripper. This is a typical case for an existing column PSV rewriting with increased throughput. The column has designed to process 200 GPM sour water, now proposed to process 260 GPM. 
which is 130% safety rating. A M size PSV was installed for the column with a set pressure of 50 pounds. The column is used to remove H2S and ammonia from cellar water. The bottom product is the dominant part of the feed. It takes part above 98% of the feed. So overhead is small, therefore we know the unbalanced heat method does not fit. This is a system sketch. The column has a treat section with a one through thermal siphon reboiler. And the packed bed with pump around cooling system, some columns has overhead reflux instead. The one through thermal siphon reboiler is heated by MP steam. The thermal siphon is under self limiting circulation by hydraulics. Feed comes from tank through a feed product heat exchanger before going into the column. We know the unbalanced heat method is not recommended for this column as it has a small overhead system and the dominant column bottom product flow. Relief loads is simply simulated by a steady state model with assuming endless supply of the fluid to, to the reboiler. Steady state modeling indicates the existing PSV, which is a 4M6, is not big enough for the total power failure and the partial power failure cases. Needs to be replaced with a bigger size. So dynamic simulation jumped in to help. Dynamic simulation model inputs detailed engineering information, such as equipment data sheet and the general arrangement drawings, instrument data sheet and calculations, pump and compressor performance curve, power distribution drawings, piping arrangement drawings, which is asymmetric drawing, control narratives, as well as process safeguard protections. Just because you need a detailed information, engineering information for model setup, it does not mean you cannot do dynamics in early stage of engineering, such as a uh, fate stage. You can always make assumptions for missing information. Assumptions need to be conservative and with good engineering judgment. You may sacrifice a bit accuracy, but the results are still better than the steady state predictions and can help you to make smart decisions to save project cost. And in fact, many of my dynamic model studies are conducted in fade stage. So the dynamic, dynamic model was built in a simulator with all listed detailed engineering information input. And it looks like this. This is how a dynamic model looks like in a simulator. Please note, a separated flush drum is used to mimic the cell pan for the fluid draw to reboiler. This one mimics the thermal siphon reboiler circulation hydraulics, and it is crucial to catch the hydraulic limitation during the upset with this detailed setup. Of course, you need to calibrate or validate your hydraulics with independent hydraulic calculations. Cases are wrong according to the upset scenario. In our case, they are total power failure and the partial power failure. Assumptions are made with associated pump and the fence failure due to the loss of power based on power supply distribution. For total power failure case, basically no fit in and no fit out, no product out, 
the pump run failed and no cooling available. But the steam to the reboiler continues as normal. The stripped acid gas continues with a pressure control valve assumed to fail last. The partial power failure event is similar to total power failure, except that the column bottom product pump are assumed working. This is based on actual power distribution with assuming one substation failure at one time. Typically, power to pumps and fans are supplied by two independent substations. We call them bus A and bus B. The cons consequence of one substation failure, bus A or bus B, has been analyzed beforehand. The worst case scenario, which is bus B case failure here, is taking as a partial power failure upset event. Dynamic simulation results are shown in this figure. It is a relieving profile of total power failure for sour water stripper. The left y-axis is the relief load in pounds per hour, and the right y-axis is the pressure at a column overhead in pound. The blue line represents the system pressure changes over the time after the upset initiated, while the red curve is the relief load recorded during the relieving process. A short period relief peak is identified by dynamic modeling for total power failure. The relief is caused by the heat input from the reboiler to the column. The liquid flows from the column up section to the reboiler based on the liquid hot up on trees and packings. The short period relief stopped once the pan is flooded by the liquid flowing down from the top section. Please note, the reboiler return nozzle is located below the pan drawing. When pan is flooded, the reboiler return line is flooded as well, which has caused reboiler circulation to stop. As a result, the heat input to column stops and the relief stops as well. This is a relief profile of partial power failure case. In this case, it stops. The overhead cooling is lost as a pump ramp pump stopped, but the bottom product pump is working. This will prevent the third pan drawing and the reboiler return line to be flooded. As a result, the reboiler keeps working and the inputs heat to the column for a relatively long period of time. And the long relief profile, longer than 15 minutes relief as shown by the red curve, is identified by dynamic model. The long relief profile reflects the fact that the bottom product pump running during the partial power failure, which allows the reboiler circulation being maintained until the column running dry. To summarize, statistic model indicate a large PSV is required for the increased throughput. Dynamic simulation predict the existing PSV, which is M size, is still adequate for the increased column throughput, which is 260 GPM. The scope of work was avoided, which is a big saving for clients' turnaround project and schedule. What is saved here is not only the PSV itself, but also the associated discharge line and the flare head pipings, which cost a lot more than the PSV replacement. 
The reduced load but dynamic simulation reflects the beauty of the dynamic simulations as compared to the steady state method. Dynamic simulation consider the limited liquid hot up in beds and on trees. It takes credit of the system volume. Hydraulic limitation is simulated. Thermal limitation is modeled. It also takes credit of the increased flow of off gas when the system pressure increased with assuming the pressure control valve on vent gas fail last. Before we move on to the next portion of our talk, let's check with Sabrina to see if there is any questions. Yes, Harry, we do have several questions that have come in. So the first one is, how do you set up your dynamic model in early stage of engineering like feed when the detailed engineering information is not available? So as I just mentioned, uh, you can always make assumptions for the missing information. For example, when the pump curve is not available, you can assume 125% rated head as a pump maximum discharge head. For control valves, you can take the typical CV value from the vendor catalog. Assuming the valve nominal size is one or two sides down from the connection piping size. For heat exchangers, they can be modeled as a fixed UE exchanger. The UE values can be taken from the steady state simulation as a best guess. The columns need to be simulated with the actual number of the trees, which can be estimated from steady state simulation setup with assumed tree efficiency. Piping arrangement and uh, safety system hydraulics can be set up in a way which matches the preliminary hydraulic calculations. The ultimate goal is to find a ballpark solution in early stage engineering, which may not be precise, but good enough for the project to make smart, smart decisions. Back to you, Sabrina. Thank you, Harry. So a second question, how would you validate your dynamic models? Uh, that's a good question. There are two different levels of validations. The first one is to validate your dynamic model with your steady state model, preferably with the operation data directly. This means you need to stabilize your dynamic model to match the steady state of operation before running any upset scenario. The second one is to compare your dynamic model performance during the upset with the equipment performance predicted by other specialized rating software. For example, you can check your dynamic heat exchanger performance against the predictions from the HTR runs. You can check your dynamic hydraulic profile with the hydraulic calculations conducted by independent tools like uh, FT Feather. Sometimes it is obvious you have to take your model to have a reasonable performance of the equipment during the upset. For example, you need to limit the heat input for a hydrocarker heat feed heater when the fresh feed is stopped in order to have a reasonable fluid temperature at outlet of the heater. Otherwise, you will see the fluid temperature will goes pretty high, higher than the tube metal design temperature, which is not reasonable even during the upset conditions. Uh, if that happens, you will have tube rupture of the heater case. That will be a different story. Back to you, Sabrina. Thank you, Harry. So we will pause questions for now, but please keep typing your questions in the Q&A panel and address to all panelists. And we will leave ample time at the end to address those. Harry, please continue. 